welcome back to another Questions with Queens. I am your host for tonight. I am Aisha, and this is my lovely co-host. I'm Brianna Orb. And tonight we have a guest star. Her name is Rosa underscore not so nice on Instagram. Hey Rosa, how are you? Yes, hey Queen. Hello. Hello. That's the proper introduction. Thank you so much. It's You're welcome. It's definitely a blessing to be here tonight. This I'm so excited. This has been like what I've been looking for for like a, a week and a half now. <laughs> yes, we appreciate you so much. Like you are so cool and so talented, and we just appreciate yes. you giving us your time right now. So thanks. Yes, I was looking on your Instagram page, and I was like, "Yes, honey, I love it. I love, love, love like everything that I've seen. I love like the way that you are so like loving the skin that you're in. Like I love it. it. Like a lot of women out here." need to know that it is okay to just be who you are any size shape color skin tone whatever just love the skin that you're in so our topic tonight is what makes you beautiful and i thought that you were like the perfect person for this topic yes Um, like we were looking down our topic list and i was like she's gonna be perfect because it was just like, it just in, intertwined. The, the universe just brought us together. And I was like, she was in the DM. And then we had our topics ready. And I was like, no, let's scratch that. Let's do something else because we got Rosa, okay? <laughs> okay. So let's dive right in. What makes a person beautiful? Like, what is it? Rosa, you want to go first since you are our guest star? I mean, I might as well. I always do like to go. For, I like to be first. I like first place. I like to. You know what I'm saying? So I, you know, and that's part of what makes people not want to go first. And we could just dive right into like, like personal issues because I've been there. Is we're so self conscious and we don't want to like put our ourselves on the line, our integrity on the line. We don't want to be judged and looked at funny or, you know go say something and misspeak. So we're always so scared to go first. But in the in the transition from being somebody that hated what they looked like, was like bullied all high school, and transforming into somebody that like, you can't, you can try to bully me, but it doesn't faze me. Because mm-hmm. I know that I'm beautifully created and made. And, and what I look like on the outside is just a smidgen of what I look like on the inside. And so that's really, for me, the, the, the deep, the deep roots, who you are, what you do in difficult situations, how you look out for the people that, that have looked out for you and how you treat your family all kind of like, for me, fits into that sphere that becomes like, well, are you good or bad? Right. Are you beautiful? Be, be, yeah. What do you think? Yes, I agree with all of those things that you said. And I think for me, beauty is within like, for me, beauty is more so, I, I go with the like 80-20 rule, like 80% of who you are, your personality, I think that shines way more than what you look like, what you can put on, what wig you got on, what skin you color you are, what complexion you are, any, all, all that stuff, your ethnicity, all of that stuff is like very minuscule, whatever, like, you know, you could be physically pretty, but I think 80% or even more than that for me sometimes is personality, like, I think that shines through the most. If you are, like you said, Rosa, treating people nicely and doing good and being doing good by people who are doing good for you, then I think that shines your your light so much more than anything else. Like, period. Right. I definitely agree. Like, I think that looks are like literally like the smallest part of beauty like you don't have to look your best to be beautiful like you don't have to put on a boatload of makeup to be beautiful you can walk outside with your hair messed up your outfit jacked up and still be beautiful like you have to realize like i know like i could go outside looking like anything from under the sun and people still gravitate towards me and people still like try to talk to me and things like that because of my inner, like my inner beauty, like it's, mm-hmm. it's just so much more the way I carry myself, the way that I talk to people, the way that I, you know what I mean? I treat the janitor the same way that I treat the CEO. And I think that those things is like really what makes a person 
beautiful all around, not just the way that they look, just not the clothes that they have on, not the latest trends that they're following, none of that thing, like that stuff don't matter, right? Because all of that stuff can come and go. Can go. So, you get your face cut up, you can, you can yes. you get an accident, anything, your, your body can change, you know, kids, yeah. stress, all huh? those things contribute to that. But if you still have that inner core, like, I think that goes a long way. And that's like one of the things that you te I teach my children. I was also a teacher. I always make sure that they are knowing their morals and values more so than anything other than what you look like and what are you wearing and stuff like that. Right. And plus those things like your morals and your character and the way that you treat people, that stuff gets you a lot further. Like, you might think that the, the girl is pretty or the, the guy is, is all of that, but and he can get whatever he wants because of those things. But for real, for real, it's your character that takes you further than your looks can ever do. In the entertainment industry, like, you you know, you could be really pretty, but you could also buy pretty once you get money. People are yes. more, um, buy it. connected on relationships and how you treat each other and you know, it's not even like a what can I do for you, what can you do for me thing, but like a um, if I drop a project, I'm if you're not posting it, I know that you're you're just not concerned like with what's what I need. So you have to really find people in your life, no matter what job you have or career path or passion you have, that really want to push you forward and want to support your goals in life. Because a person that doesn't want to support your goals or help, like I'm sorry, help finance your goals, like. If I'm selling shirts, you better buy you. Like, I'm yep. not playing with y'all. Like, you're not, you can't call yourself a fan or a supporter or a friend if you're not. And that's what I do. So that's that's part of that, you know, that inner strength to be able to support people and not feel like we're all competition is what I really love about the questions with Queen concept that you guys had. Because Thank it's you. like, nah, for real, like, it's like we're all celebrating the fact that we're all these queens that give life like we are the creators of the world of like life we, like <laughs> of everything like, uh, and then we're still especially in this united states culture expected to do so much like it's not even just the housework anymore it's the housework go to work make money do job and so you have to find that inner peace in yourself because it'll translate on the outside. If you're unhappy with yourself and you don't think you're beautiful outside and in, you'll start treating people like they're not beautiful. And every person is beautiful, to, no matter, unless they're racist. And then I just don't have time for you. Period. Right. <laughs> Period. But otherwise, you know you're beautiful and you just need to treat yourself and other people according to the fact that you're beautiful and everybody makes mistakes. As someone that was bullied before, like how did you transform from being, you know, listening to what people had to say about you being a, like, you know, targeted and things like that. I mean, how did you transfer to how you are now to just be like, at this point, I'm good fuck. I am who I am. What advice can you give to somebody that was in your position before? Yeah, I need that too. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, the bullying started when I was in fifth grade, right? Wow. I transferred from a school in North Carolina to a school in the suburbs, main line of Pennsylvania. My mom worked at a military school. We lived on the military base. So I was the, I was the poor kid in the school. And so I didn't have the same clothes. I didn't go to the same vacations. I still went to Paris and Rome. I'm still super blessed and privileged. But I wasn't going to the same places as all of them. So I started getting bullied really early. And that affected my, I did never dated somebody in my high school, like ever. I did not date until Damn. I was 18. Like they really tortured me. Wow. Whale noises while I walked down the hallway. Like I don't, I didn't forget about them. I could call their names out, but that would give them way more clout because they could do this thing. Tell them, but, look at you now. Like, I mean, I, like, I the this. empowerment comes from remembering what it felt like to be the captain of the cheerleading squad and then be fucking, oh, excuse me, mood at. And we come like, all the time, don't oh, you girl, You can come yes. and mood at and, go, and, and, and guys saying, mm, and making whale noises while you pass, like, to them, to them being in your DMs 10 years later, like, mm -hmm. if I cut my hair off. Right, I went bald. I love And that's it. when I was I like, love. if you if you're bald, you either have to look in the mirror and love yourself 
or right. you're gonna hide your face, hide, put a hat on all the time. And I wanted to do this music, so it was like, well, I'm gonna be bald and big and beautiful. The three B's right there, the, you know. Yes, I mean? that's right. Yes, because yes, if you are bald, you have to have some type of inner strength and inner beauty and love for yourself that you just like whatever it's this is it like I'm bald and that's it like I remember I cut my hair as well and I just felt so like oh whatever you just gonna get what you're gonna get and that's gonna be that it's like you go through one bottle of shampoo in four months you're like this is the greatest thing yeah. ever <laughs> it feels so good you're like I ain't gotta do nothing to that <laughs> so you went through a lot and you were able to just find your inner beauty and inner strength and self-love and self-care and turn that around and make it like a brand and just like, hey, I am who I am and just take it or leave it. I think that's so great. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think that a lot of young people go through bullying and today, unfortunately, a lot of people are killing themselves because of what people are saying or doing to them. And it's so, so sad to like know that somebody is being bullied and pushed to their limit and they don't want to be here no more they feel like they just want to end it all so i feel like it's very important for us to tackle this conversation because we need people to know that no matter what no no matter what people are saying about you that you were created to be wonderful you were created to be this shining star like if people you not even created to be anything not to cut you off but you were created like yeah. god yeah the maker the creator whatever you believe did did not waste their time on you they created mm -hmm. you for something you have to find your purpose in the world and just do it yeah. you were created period yeah. I, i've been there like that's what perpetuated me to really get into activism aside from like you know not having self-esteem and ending up in an abusive relationship that I married and had a kid for with and had to like run away from but I also had my senior year a really good friend commit suicide and from from my own personal experience of being depressed She she felt alone while I was in I was institutionalized. She felt alone and nobody was there to check. She felt like nobody could talk to her. She was everybody was talking about her. And she ended up killing herself like three weeks after I got out of the hospital. And it was it was a, a moment where I had to go back into an institution to take care of myself. Underage going to a mental hospital is so helpful if you're having suicidal thoughts. If you're above 18, you really need to go to a therapist or a psychiatrist. They have them on the computer. Even before becoming 18, it's happening younger and younger, and these kids are feeling more and more less than, more and more lonely today. And I just Especially with that, the quarantine. The yes, are for so sure. Sad. For My sure, My four-year-old yes. is devastated. Yeah, it's crazy, and they and they're too young. It's I see. I was like I said, I'm a preschool teacher, so I've seen it as young as three years old, where kids will be like, "Oh, I don't want to play with you," and mm -mm, Miss Brianna is like, "Ah, ah, 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 we're gonna play with everybody. We're gonna play yes. together, and we're gonna love it, and we're gonna say something nice about each other. Like you don't know how far a hug can go. That's one of the things that I always make sure I did." in my classroom or meeting families, like making sure I get to know the families because you never know what they're going through in order to bring their kid here. And you want their kid to just, you can't just be like, hey, listen to me or hey, learn this and do this because I said so, or I'm the authority. No, you got to meet them and understand where they are and how to reach them. So I think social emotional development is very important and you can go to counseling as young as two years old. Yeah, I think Bro. that households, I think that where the stigma come from now as an adult is that when you're a child, you're raised and you're told all the time, like, what happens in this house stays in this house. So it'd be really hard for you to get out of that mentality as an adult or as a teenager because it's like your whole life you told, like, even if DHS is called into a family or whatever, you're told, oh, don't you tell them I did this or don't you tell them this and don't you tell them that. So it actually makes it hard when you're trying to, like break down all of those narratives and you're trying to tell these children like it's okay to seek help it's okay to talk to a therapist it's okay to do these things because it's taking care of yourself that self-care is very important 
We have yeah. to stop making people feel bad for taking care of our, themselves. And that's something we do a lot in our society. Yes. We, we tell people like, oh, you're selfish for wanting things like alone time or for wanting that new pair of shoes. Now, it doesn't always have to be physical things, but you have to, I, I love to get my nails done. And look, before COVID, I would get my nails done every three weeks. Now, my family's health is more important than my nails, but getting my nails done is self-care. It, it so makes cute. me feel good. Right. You gotta you be it for yourself. Yeah. Because if you don't feel good, then you can't be your beautiful self. Like if you, if you not don't have the strength, it's like you, yeah, you're you, swimming in a pond and you're mm -hmm. drowning, and you have to save other people drowning. Right. How are you gonna save people drowning if you're drowning too? Yeah, it's that's sure. a perfect example. And you that's why to... that's why all my relationships have failed in the past because I never loved myself, and I was trying to love all these people. I feel yeah. so bad. I was trying to love all these people. Without loving myself, and if you don't love yourself, there's no way that you can love anybody else, not even your own child. You have to learn to love yourself. OMG, yes, that is so true. And <laughs> I'm yeah. going through that right now, like just the whole energy cleanse of just like getting rid of detox people, or no, not detox people, toxic people, and I'm detoxing from <laughs> the. <laughs> And that, that was episodes. Yes, that's episode. Make sure y'all check that out when we're talking about toxic family members and things. But um, I yeah, I I'm, I'm, I'm making sure I'm cleansing my energy of everything and anything that is not for me, you know. And I've, I've, I'm a giver, so I've given myself like two thousand million percent and just like totally forgot about Brianna. So I am just working on just that right now. You that, you, I don't do that anymore. Uh uh. I no no uh -uh. I'm not there. No I I'm sorry. What's that song by um P &B? I'm selfish. I'm yes. <laughs> yeah um so do you guys feel like there's levels to beauty? Like, you know how, like, what's the difference between being cute, pretty, beautiful, gorgeous? Like, or is it a level to being, like, in this beauty, the top level? Or is it the middle level? Like, where are we placing it at? I feel like we all have such different definitions. And it's almost like the same thing as happy. Like, the word happy is just a... Hey. You can't, you can't be like, I want to be happy all the time because honestly, happiness is a neurotransmitted chemical feeling in your brain. So you're not going to always feel happy. But so in psychology, we say you're going to be well, similar to like beautiful, like, well, do you want to be beautiful on the inside, the outside? Do you want to be, do you want to be like kind to other people? Is that what you consider beautiful? Because if you consider beautiful getting your, your lipo and your booty, I, that's that's on you. That's your definition of beautiful. It's just like yes, you decide so to have sex with in the bedroom. That's on you. Yes, it has so many definitions. Like everybody, beautiful is something different to everybody. It's just like even in dating, it's just like you might find somebody attractive, and they might be ugly as hell to the next person, but to you, but that you're, person is gorgeous. Drop dead gorgeous. So it's and just you like, might have different beauty. perspectives of what. Beauty mm -hmm. is and what, what attract, attract, every attraction guy is. I ever dated is ugly, and I think every guy she ever dated is ugly. I swear, it's so funny. Yeah, that's how it be. So it just be the same thing with beauty. It's just like my definition of beauty might not be your definition of beauty or the next person's definition of beauty. Like some people might think that you own, like beauty is what you look like. It probably don't have nothing to do with and your that's, personality. That's beauty. what society makes you think. Like what is what you look mm -hmm. like is that's it. It doesn't have nothing to do with what you said, how you treat that person, mm -hmm. whatever you did, blah, blah, blah. Like, Meg the Stallion got <laughs> shot, for God's sake. And they yes. were tripping. Uh, like, she's nothing. And she's, she oh, she rap about this and that. Oh, she rap about sucking dick. So now she's able to get shot. Like, what? She's still a human. Y'all forgot? Like, she got. I just thought it was crazy that everybody was chilling when it was, st COVID is still on the loose. Right. It was all over at Kylie House. And I had made a smart a smart comment on a shade room post where they posted Kylie and her and Tori Lanez. I was like, um, this looks like a COVID hotspot. And like 10,000 people liked the comment. And then like, look, like 20 minutes later, Megan Thee Stallion was shot. I was like, I feel like I, I, I have bad karma in you because I said I was talking shit like. 
Right. You no, know, it's not nobody's fault. But I'm just saying, like, as far as the society making it seem like is less, she's less than because of something that she does or her job or whatever. Like, she's still a, a woman that goes to school. She, yeah, like, why can't she shake her booty and, and still be a victim of, of whatever, domestic violence or whatever? Like, why not? Like, I was just like, really? This is the world they that we're in. And it's so women. scary. And they love to blame the victim for anything that yes. happens with, with like the DV, domestic violence, abuse, or like rape. Like they love to be like, oh well, she was wearing this, and like, <laughs> but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like and a lot of people don't even know the rape laws. Like in the like in many states, if somebody has a drink in even one drink. It mm -hmm. makes them unable to consent. So it's intoxicated, yep. That means, that means that if you had sex with anybody that's ever had a drink, you rape them. And that's by law. Now, granted, our laws might be messed up, and we have a whole social issue with our, with our laws that we have to face, but we're not talking about the social issues tonight. We're talking about being beautiful, and you just have to work on, you know, that inner self before you try to go around and judge people and tell them who they can and can't be. Yes, you have to work on yourself because, like I said, you can be the prettiest person on the outside, drop dead gorgeous. But, honey, in the inside, if you're nasty to people, if you are selfish, if you are like anything, those things can bring Perfect up example, the R. Kelly. People might think he's so sexy. Oh, they can't wait to get a piece of that. Da, da, da. And look. <laughs> and look. Yeah, you got to be careful. All that beauty don't matter. Don't, all that face stuff don't matter, okay? Because you get old. What's, what happens when you get old and, and you wrinkled now or you get bags on your eyes? What 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 happens when you can't, the makeup ain't going to cover all that the, 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 um, imperfection? What happens yeah. then? That's, that's what Botox is for. No, I'm <laughs> I'm <kidding. laughs> what happens that's when you get old? What you get? All these um, adult people look so good on the outside because they get their bodies and their faces done. And as I said, some people, that's their job. So for them to go and change their bodies or to alter their bodies, that's what you get paid to do. Like, I get paid to put on lingerie and take pictures. I'm sorry. You, you look good, people. okay? <laughs> Honey, <laughs> drop ten gorgeous. You okay? look good, okay? I was like, I like, 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 like. We got to get her in here. <laughs> I'm out of the boob size. They ain't got my size. I'm just saying, too. They go up to 6XL. So I'm, you, I know you're smaller than the 6XL. Oh, they might. Oh, they got you, bitch. You're smaller than the 6XL. Stop playing. That's they why might. I told you. He's They're not. They're all inclusive. They start, they start at like a double zero and they go all the way up past like what Lane Bryan goes up. And I'm shot that Lane Bryan for bars my whole life. So. Me, too. Me after the show. Yeah, like sliding her. Slide our DMs. I need that. Well, you married. Yes, no, you and they're super lit, too. Myself. They have contests. They give away lingerie. They have a podcast called the True Empowerment Podcast, right? And we, it's saw, like, we listen to it. It's so kicky. Mm -hmm. It's so kicky. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm PG. Keisha was like, she was like, I thought it was for black people. She was like, but I like this. I'm staying on. <laughs> Girl, got some stuff in the mail, so we got to get Rosa back. I love her. <laughs> yes, we, she was sorry. She was like, I thought this was for something else, but I like it. I'm staying. <laughs> well, do you guys think that size matters? Not talking about size, like in the bedroom. Oh, <laughs> like, like, like down We were just being a little kinky, but I was going to say about, yes. Like, <laughs> <flip> <laughs> oh, we talk about body weight. We talk about body oh. size. Okay, so let I know me, we let were me, just being a little kinky. <laughs> let me let me get back together. Everybody's attracted to somebody. Like, er, like <laughs> people say to have a type is they call it so many different things nowadays. Like, but everybody's attracted to something. Like for me, I'm a I'm a big girl. I like my men a little more, you know, smaller with muscles. Yeah. That doesn't mean I'm not gonna go out on a date with a thick a thicker than a snicker yes. man because they yes. treat you really nice. They treat you really they nice. They really do. They it's really about do. Your energy. Sometimes you don't even end up with your type. And you can talk I, about your insecurities I, I, at the listen. same time. You could be like, you want your, your roles and my roles are together. We are intertwined. Look. <laughs>
it will treat you very nice and take you on some nice dates yes. and be big and all of that. But yeah, I gotta I gotta go to the smaller guys because they be having the surprises and stuff. But Girl, I'm high. But you know, I, I don't judge based on gender. So, you know, I, I go by, like, men, sexual. So, like, but when it comes to okay. a woman, I, 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 I'm tall, short, big, wide, booty, little booty, little. All of it matters. I don't think any woman is ugly unless she's nasty on the inside. But men, yes, yeah, I stay away from certain types of men, especially. um, I never dated a white guy, but don't, don't be mad. Girl! <laughs> I loved her <laughs> because you have to understand deep down beauty is really the connection that you have with other people yes. I might be beautiful to 50 people and then there's another 500 that, that don't think I'm beautiful but it's if you radiate the right types of energy you're gonna attract the proper people for your life and you'll be in a line with what you're supposed to do so who cares if other people think you're beautiful yes. you're the only one that matters at this point, yep. at this point, tuh, tuh, that's all I can say is, tuh, listen, as long as you feel good and you know you that you, good. you walk out the door, you the shit, you like your outfit, you like your yes. cuteness, you like your makeup, you like your concealer, you like your red wig or whatever, you know, you just go I'm out hot. here and you just do what you is. need to do. And that's it. Like, yeah, people I think will read that. It. Yeah, that I think that when you get so caught up in what other people think about you, that's when you really start to take away from your beauty because you start to do stuff that you wouldn't normally do that's not like you to try to keep up with an image Don't and all that you get you start to wear yourself out trying to keep up with this fake image rather than just being who you are genuinely and letting it shine it's easier to be yourself it's mm -hmm. so much more easier to be yourself and never you ever be with somebody else wants you to be Okay, it is really hard, hard, especially when you're in the entertainment industry. People want you to be a type of way. Like, I, you know, I don't know how many times I've been told that as a white woman, like, in doing pop music, oh, well, you can't smoke weed. First of all, it's medicinally legal in my state. <laughs> so if somebody doesn't want to hire me because I smoke weed, well, then they got the wrong person. And that's people. their laws. That's, that's you know what I'm saying? Laws. Honey, you are, your personality is all of that. And I get paid. I get paid. And I and get paid. Have a, you I have a demographic. You have, you have a lane of white women that smoke weed, that want to listen to music like you, that have, you know, like your sound and how you have your little, you know, your whole brand and everything like that is some women that's that you have a lane for that everything is people not just want to judge us lane. based off the smallest stuff like people want to take us and box us in like that's what people like to do because it makes them more comfortable like because they feel like they figured you out whereas i'm a pandora's box of constantly evolving constantly changing constantly finding new things when i was 12 would you would i have eaten eggplants no but as a 26-year-old, I am a vegan. So, like, I eat all day. So, if you change, you evolve. I didn't yes. know every lyric to Little Wayne when I was 12, neither. But now I do. Like, let's go. Let's <laughs> Still don't. <You're> or not. <laughs> right. Okay. We have a comment. One of our followers said that they've had white, black, big, small. It all depends on the personality. Honey, yes. That's what I'm saying. That, the that's what makes that personality because that's what you really got to deal with you don't deal with they, their looks them being pretty you got to deal with that personality is that person nasty is that do you are you happy with that person like people get on my damn nerves when they nasty I can't <laughs> get them that. like i can't it hurts my spirit i cannot so you just have to be really careful about who you bring around you yourself do. and it all feeds back into like how you treat yourself is is the people you'll bring around you will treat you that same way so if uh, you're always spending your money the people around you are going to expect you to always spend your money on them yeah. if you start uh, off with boundaries in relationships that's a sign of being well and healthy and and mm -hmm. having good solid foundation in your relationship so whether it's sexual or not you should always start off with a strong foundation of trust and honesty and self-care yeah, because that's, that's, that's the stuff that really, like... But I, I might have to say, like, I don't... I still need to look at you, so I still am in that, like, 20% of... So I gotta be right, like, you know? Like, we, you we have to go out 
Like something gotta be you gotta be all right for me. So I I gotta type and whatever. So I can go with that a little bit, but I, I, personality I, I, is bigger I, than that. I love dark skinned men, but I'm telling you, me every too. body that I've ever been with have been light skinned. I don't know, but like I don't think that you ever really end up with the type of person that you feel like you like, right? I like dark skinned people, but all dark skinned men have been assholes. So I just like it'd be the light skinned ones that be like their personalities be popping, and I like that more, right? So I don't know. Yeah, I done, I done like procreated. I didn't procreate it with what I like, but that's that was that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. That went somewhere. My daughter yeah. is Cajun Creole, so she she's mixed. Yeah. You know, my, 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 my ex husband is is a dark a dark black man. I find him. My daughter Alabama. My daughter Louisiana. You mixed that green up with that and make it taste Alabama. Damn. <laughs> I like Look, I be, I be, do, I be looking at. I look at hair tutorials like probably seven or eight times a week just because my daughter has so much hair. And like, Girl, I never had to like my hair. Like, it was like uh, done and go. My daughter's hair is like down to here. I have to, I, I have to like section it out. Condition it, put the oils in the scalp, brush through it, comb through right. the scalp, put the te I, I I made the mistake of using the plastic rubber bands once and they all oh, girl, I I know that was oh. there, wasn't it? <laughs> she was mad at two. I, I was mad at the I was the mad one. I'm like, where did all the hair ties go from inside <laughs> all of these braids? She's like, Mom, they're just popping. I'm like, how? I can wear these hair ties and they don't how old is she? She's four. Oh yes. yes, but she looks like an eight-year-old. She's she's like a size eighteen, so she's super <laughs> tall. But girl, wow. time that you instill in her that no matter what nobody says, you are beautiful. I know with my daughter, like when she, it was very important to me. Last year, she started school, and when I say I was, like, very nervous and I was scared to death, I just didn't want, I didn't want to send my baby out into the world. Like, I didn't, the world is so cruel. Like, I didn't want to send her out there as a, I just was just like, my baby is not ready. She's so sensitive. She's so, I don't have time to be beating nobody's kids up, guys. Please. Right, kids, their parents, their aunties, their cousins, everybody. I'm gonna just have to. I'm just going to jail. So what I had did for her was I had um, every morning. I, first of all, I made her like this school wall. So when she walked out the door, it's like I had um, a dry erase board, and I would put like quotes for the week, like "You're beautiful," "Your melon is popping," "Your like all of this stuff," just to let her know, like no matter what the world might say to you, baby, honey, you are beautiful you are loved you are like anything i just didn't want the world to tear my baby down like even still now like it's just so scary sending these babies out into the world these kids is mean these days right Girl, it's, and it's you, not I'm... even the kids the adults are mean too yes! like, the adults, but it really starts so like, young oh, God, it's cruel it's hard you know i was just having this conversation today because there is a ballet, a ballet company called the chocolate ballerina Mm -hmm. And um, I'm fortunate enough to know one of the, the people that work for the, the ballerina company. And I want my daughter, my daughter loves ballet. And I want my daughter to be surrounded by people that not only share with the passion she loves, but also that look like her. Mm -hmm. I don't want her to grow up in a world where people don't look like her. Like I, when I, I, I had a little, a little uh, court case with my mother, with my daughter. And so she kept her from me for like eight months. And so when I came, got finally got to come after the eight months, um, I saw my daughter didn't have a lot of like black Barbies, didn't have a lot of black dollies, didn't have a lot of books that talked about me in black, didn't have black characters in the books. Like, so I made it like a, a necessity to yeah. buy dolls that are black and I, I every time i see it like there was like two black ballerina dolls now there's always there's they're not for representative of the true culture because the hair is always straight or like like i'm like it's either too straight or too nappy it's never <laughs> where it's supposed to be in. like I'm right <laughs> Like right, it'd be like, like I'm not, I'm not, I'm not like my hair don't look like that, but I am black, mm -hmm. but like it don't look like that. 
and just yeah. be like overly overly done and too much done yeah. like it's like mm-hmm. well we had a comment one of our viewers said um they have three girls all from different daddies one was black as shit <laughs> i'm gonna say dark skin one is medium and the other one is light skin um and the people would ask if one of the the light skin one was a white dad like if the child was a white dad and the mom says she is a brown skin girl herself so it'd be like that. that's just, society it's like my kids. my kids are all light skin all of them they take after their dad and when i tell you it'd be like and they'll be like oh they're so pretty oh they're is that your nieces my Ma'am, my nieces. Right. No, uh, they're on my. They're on my. These kids. <laughs> the fuck you talking See? about? So I don't know. Like people really like people really people really read too much into skin tone. Like or they'll oh, say the stuff like, "Oh, they're pretty for a dark skin girl." Oh my god, that kills me. Cause that's not a compliment. That's actually an insult. Don't, just why you can't just say pretty. Like you had to box it in and give it a category. You need to be comfortable with with somebody else's beauty. People need to just stop caring about what other people look like. If my breath smells, tell me. But you do <laughs> not have the right to tell me about my fat rolls. These are mine. Right. This is my pasty skin. You that I like to like get them. Them. Like, yes, this is my skin. This is my body. And somebody out in the world gonna like it. Like <laughs> the worst is that 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 as a black woman, you have to deal with on top of the beauty standards from like society, like there's beauty standards in the workplace. Like I was just reading about all these articles talking about how you can't, people don't wear their natural hair until after the job. I'm like, what? That happened to me in high school or junior high school, actually. It was like, yeah, eighth grade. And um, I went to a charter school and it was like a new up and coming charter school. So they were just like, you know, making up rules. If anybody doesn't know, charter schools are basically public schools. They have like private rules and stuff like that. They're owned by a person. So they're able to do whatever they want to do and like have their own, you know, sector of rules. So um, they're they still were, funded by the state. Still funded by the state. Yes. But they have, um, they were up and coming. So it was like a, a principal who was like all about like, it was a maritime based academy so it was like all like about boats and water and oceanography and all that stuff that they done made up i don't know my mom was just like listen you going to a different school you're not going to public school so she was trying something out so um they it was i had a black principal and then a a white uh ceo or whatever the black principal stopped me one day in the hallway i don't know if y'all remember like the little crazy ponytails like the wet and wavies but and wavy- um well, that was my thing. I had the and big, yeah, he was a bus, like $7 or something like that. I wore that faithfully back in the day, like when I was a young boy. And they, she was like, oh, this is not a part of being a cadet. They called us cadet, like the whole boat type situation or whatever. And basically you had to confer to that. It was nowhere in the policy book, nowhere, nothing that says specifically what type of hairstyle to wear. As long as we had our uniform shirt on and our uniform shirt was tucked in, black pants, black shoes, we was good. They ain't say nothing about her hair, but she felt the black principal felt a need to stop me and say like, "Oh no, this is not you. Don't, you're not in compliance with your hairstyle, stuff like that." And I remember telling my mom, and she was like, "Yeah, you're gonna wear whatever hairstyle you want to wear." Like, and I went to school. She had a problem calling me. She and I remember it was like white students walking past, and she stopped me in the hallway saying that, and they had blue hair green hair, mohawk spiked up, and I'm like, but my my point, how you, first of all, how you know it was late, so how you didn't know it's not mine? <laughs> like, how you, how you didn't know? So I'm just like, that was, that was a little moment of like, oh, your beauty standards or whatever, you had to stay, stay by that. And I'm like, you, you, you brown too, sis, why you, why you hating? Like, why? So yeah. they, they have to deal with that. Kids have to deal with that, and as young as two years old and younger than that. Because younger than that, even with, like, I remember my daughter came home, and, you know, I let my baby be a baby. If she says she wants some sketches, she's going to get them sketches. They light up, you like them, you're going to get them. Girl, she had got some star boots from Walmart, and she really wanted them. It was gray. She went and warmed the school, and she came home crying. I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, because they told me my Uggs was fake. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> 
kids are oh, so mean. And that's a shame that I they even to, know that is, nowadays. Like we didn't know about no Yeah, like we didn't know about this stuff. Mind you, I buy my daughter name brand stuff all the time, but it's just because I be thinking it's cute. But at the same time, like if I think the Walmart stuff is cute, she's gonna wear the Walmart stuff too. And I had to sit down, I had to have a conversation with my daughter and let her know, like, listen, girl, if you go to shoe school with no shoes on, if that's what you wanna do, that's what you wanna do. You you be comfortable and confident in the decisions that you make. I said, did the little girl have Uggs on? She said, no. I said, well, what kind of shoes she had on? She said, she just had on like the little doll. She's just like doll shoes. She pointed to her doll and was like, shoes, something like that. I said, well, you should have told her because I'm that parent. <laughs> you ain't got no Uggs on either. <laughs> Period. You got to oh, instill that like, strip in them. Like, it's like, these kids know young. Like, I was just like, oh my God. Parenting so in the society. Of you them being ignorant and, and having no knowledge of what's really important. Like, you shouldn't be, I used to have kids, didn't know a thing, can count to five in preschool and was wearing Gucci something and this and that. And I'm like, you worried, you you made him wear that or her wear that? Like, that's that's what your, your mindset is at? Like, I think it goes too look. fast to buy expensive clothes. That little girl goes through jeans like once every two exactly. months. Exactly. Yeah. Children, yeah. I'm never buying none of that. No. Girl, I sent my baby to school. I sent her to school. She came home, and I, when I say she had tears in her stockings from her ankles oh. to her butt. Oh. For one like, day, oh, those stockings be done. <laughs> Girl, I would never send her to school. In no, I'd be mad sending her to school with her Dr. Martins. So I'm damn sure I ain't about to send her no Gucci. My yeah, son had holes in his jeans going to school. They, them kids I said, your jeans? Who was pulling you on the ground? What was you doing? Well, mom, I was flipping and jumping. Okay, that's it. Nope. Nope. Yeah, like, and then when you do stuff like that, you teach your kids to, to associate beauty or like anything Material with stuff. material things. Mm -hmm. Girl, I told my baby, listen, you go to school with whatever you feel like you want to wear today. If that's what you want to wear, as long as you get in your education. I said, now I'm the type of parent. I take school very seriously. I'm y'all bullying my baby for having on no name Uggs, but she the only one walking in school with elaborate project. Yeah, get like her. Okay, get yep. like her. She had a she had a, a project where she had to do. Um, it was like the Black History Project. Everybody coming in with poster boards rolled up. Child, I made my baby a bus. She chose Rosa Park. I made my baby a bus. If you're going to do this project, baby, we want to knock this project out the park, okay? Uh, Make her a bus. You take that bus and you go explain why Rosa didn't move. You go do that. But don't you worry about why some why you why you don't got Ugg on the back. You wanna, come on, I can make that Ugg sign and tape it to the back of your shoe if you're that concerned. Like, you don't, I tell her, like, you don't concern yourself with that. You concern yourself with educating yourself, working on your personality, treating people mm -hmm. nice. Even and when people when you at hurt. school for you, you at school yeah, to learn. School for That's you. it. That's one yeah, thing like, people they cannot take away from you is your education. No your education. How are you going to be doing it? But time. you can't take away your education. So that's more important. Just know that you at school for that. You're going to meet. Yeah, you're going to get social needs and you're going to meet people and all that stuff, but you're going to move move past those people someday. Like, understand that. Yeah, because, like, even when she, like, cause she had a, she was going through some things where she was being bullied in school. And like I said, I'm that parent. Um, I hate to say it, but I'm that parent. Hit them the fuck back. I'm that parent. I don't give a fuck. Hit them back. Now, I get, you gave him a warning to hit him back. And my daughter is not like that. Like, my daughter is like, no, mom, because that's no, not mom. your friends. And that's not how you talk to people. Like, she's so, it, it made me proud because I'm like, damn, she really is taking to affect the things that I am telling her and how to be and her personality and all of that stuff. But at the same time, baby, you got to put that on hold for just a second sometimes. I got to teach you that part. Put it on hold. You got to learn how to stick up for yourself. And that's yeah, one of the biggest it. parts about being beautiful and learning to love yourself is you cannot just let people walk all over you and say nasty things and call you names. You can stand up for yourself. And sometimes that might put you in the line of fire. But in life is all about what hoops you're willing to jump through. And that relates to every aspect of your life. Are you willing to jump through these hoops to stand proud and to say this is who I am, yeah. this is who I will be, or, or are you not going to jump through that hoop? That's on you, and and you have to, as you even as you get older, decide 
what you're going to stand for. That's why I do things like this because I stand for something a whole lot different than, yes. than other people. I stand for togetherness and empowerment and, and connecting and genuine real relationships and support and share yes. knowledge. I'm not about that stingy stuff. I, I'm also about it's getting to the bag. So if it's not about the bag, don't. I don't, period. You don't have nothing to talk about. <laughs> like, that's another thing. Yes, a good band, going back to the beauty thing, like, you just have to know who you are and understand what you're going to leave into the world. Like, once we're all <laughs> out of this physical body and we go wherever we go, whatever you believe, whatever, out of the universe, what did you leave behind? What did you, what did you do in the world? That's great. Like, that's my whole thing. Like, how I am with people. Sometimes it's a gift and a curse. Sometimes it's taking advantage of whatever. But, who you are as a, pe a person goes a long way. I can meet strangers who've been like, oh my goodness, you're so nice. Da, da, da. Like just simply by even giving a smile, hello, letting them know something was wrong when, you know, somebody else didn't let them know something was wrong. Oh, you got your money sticking out, $50 sticking out your pocket, put it back down. I could have been the, the evil person to take it, you know, but no, I'm the person that's like, oh no, you have your $50 sticking out, put that back. You need that. Like, put it in your pocket. I'm the person to be That's like, my, your money's sticking out your pocket. Is that my tip? Right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but, it's like, you just, you just have to be a good person. Like, that's just period. That's what I teach my son to yeah. be. Um, and I understand who he is. Be great. Like, stand your ground. Like, if that's who you are, be who you are. Don't be sorry for who you are. Like, you don't, just because that person is not like this or this person is different it doesn't matter like girl be yourself it costs nothing to be yourself it's Period. easier to be yourself like and that makes you shine so much more like it makes you so much more like attractive like and the world is kinder today than it has been in the past when i was in high school the world was really mean like and yes. while the world is still mean their kids are like more accepting of people that do different types of things now. Yes. Like, yes. Like, like, being the cool kid isn't cool anymore. Being the bully is not cool anymore. Like, kids do step up. Being, and I, I, being I, the kid that's in robots and blocks and stuff like that is the cool thing now. Like, my son like, is like, this whole Being yourself like, is really cool. Like, so you yeah. don't have to oppress anybody. And, like, even in adulthood, like, whatever whatever you're doing, like, it, you shouldn't do it to impress other people. You should do it to better yourself. Yeah. yeah, like, I love the underdog. I love the person that's different. I love, even, like, in my music, like, I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan, no matter what anybody says, but, like, I love people <laughs> that are just different beings and stuff like that and just have, they are about their self and about their craft and they want the best for the world and they are just natural nurturers and healers and stuff like that and they they just focus on themselves and their whatever they are loving to do, like, my son has been on this whole big thing about, oh, I'm weird. I'm weird. And I'm like, that's okay. We're, mommy's weird, too. I'm weird. Weird means you're unique. Weird. You are different. You are a person that's of, of, of another being. Like, you are just amazing. Like, just know that. And it's okay. When my daughter says words that, like, I don't think she has the full concept of, like, yeah, weird same thing. or ugly or hate. I'm like, well, do you know what that means? Yeah. Do you actually know what that means? Like, Cause she's, you know, my daughter being four, like she's so young, she'll just repeat what she hears in shows mm -hmm. and stuff. So I'm very conscious about like the words I use because being like, I was the other day I was talking about working out and I was on the phone with her godmother. And I was like, I'm just so fat. And like the next day, my my daughter said, "Well, why are you fat? Yeah, why are you fat. So are you, so am I fat? And I had to sit there and be like, well, fat is just the stuff that's on mommy's stomach, like." <laughs> you you just can't call people that like it's not nice and mm. i opened up a can of worms on myself by using yep. terminology that wasn't kind to my own body yeah and just being mindful of that yes like we are our kids are so such so, so sponges and stuff like that they hear everything and you just it helps you reflect it helps you learn and mentally like take that in and like my son has taught me so much stuff just like just by just being a person like oh you can't say that mom don't say that word that's not nice oh, okay my bad like I didn't even realize you know that's my daughter was saying or like oh okay my bad like you know or you you can't say this but mommy said this but how am I telling you don't say something that I'm saying like 
they're little people too. They're little humans. So just be mindful of that. So they understand. They just don't know everything, but they understand and they can conceptualize. It. Just Rosa, where can our followers find you? Yes, drop your plug, everything. So where I'd love people to check me out is YouTube because okay. I I'm slacking on my YouTube. I do I have three music videos out and yes, um, they're they're really close to my heart. I'm shooting a music video next week in Miami. So I definitely want everybody to link me on there. Rosa Nice is my stage name. Rosa Nice. You know, Instagram it's Rosa underscore not so underscore nice. But if you type my name Rosa Nice into Google, you can find everything about me, even my OnlyFans, which is not sexual at all. So don't get your hopes up. Basically, I have music everywhere. I'm actually blessed to be the top streaming artist on an application called Loom. And um, I'm, I'm really blessed like to be the top R&B streaming artist on this I app. love making music. I make it to make myself feel better and to be able to speak to people like in a different way. Like people listen for some reason when I sing. And, and before that, they didn't listen to me. So... <laughs> I'm like, hey, look at me now. I, it's my turn to tell y'all what I know. And like, even the song we played in the intro, that's that scene of my project. Mm -hmm. Me too. If you listen to the words, like the chorus is, I really want to see you, see you. I really want to see, see you. you. That's, that's the part that I love. Like, I want to see who you are. Like, break them walls down. Let me see who you really are. I don't care about nothing else. Like, I don't care. Like, I'm asking you, do you want to come with me on this journey of, like, self-reflection and finding yourself rather than, like, really just, like, following other people? Like, are you ready? Because I'm a, I'm a risk. Jump, taking the ride with me is a risk. People should know that. Like, Period. I have a loud mouth. I am very vocal. I advocate for people who don't have <laughs> abilities to advocate for themselves. And I'm a very left side Democrat. And I'm also part of the LGBTQ community. So yes. I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm all me. Like, and so if I can be all me, I want you to be all you as long as what all you is doesn't affect my all me. That's right. right. I love that. That's what we are all about questions with queens was started just because we wanted to like empower and bring all of those type of women together that know themselves still finding themselves want to talk about themselves just want to be right. you know a, a, a group a unity a group a community like we need more of that and we don't have that really with in within the women like yeah like we want to bring that together since we are three powerful voices and different personalities and different you know attributes and different things of life but we also have one thing in common that we are women we mother stuff like that so we wanted to definitely just bring that together that's what we all stand for so I love that you are also like that so thank you I'm all about that I'm all about giving back and like even with I, I'm a Pandora playlist curator I, I curate pan, uh, playlists for Loom I don't just like do mainstream artists I put I put smaller artists on like I want everybody to be successful in who they are and what their dreams are like I'm not shooting anybody down so it's like as long as you come ready to work you come with good quality product like I, I I'm not gonna put you down I'm gonna support you I'm gonna sew and see what you have and so I super appreciate being here because it was all good vibes and good energy you know and based in like my how my life is going is only up from here so this is like a super blessing to just be given the platform to talk about where i've been and who, who i am yes yeah. we love well, that we want to thank you rosa for joining us tonight um we hope to have you back um we want to also we're, thank going, we're going to have you back oh okay, yeah we, we, we go here <laughs> So we want to thank everyone else for tuning in tonight. Um, you guys can join us each and every Wednesday at 8.30. Um, our links will be in our bio. Um, we'll have Rosa information posted on our Instagram page as well so you guys can know where to find her, where to check her music out. And, um, and we also want to let you guys know that you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, um, Facebook, Spotify. We are everywhere. Apple Podcasts. We are everywhere. So... <laughs> I wanted to leave you guys with a quote that is that you are beautiful as you are. Be yourself, love yourself, and prosper. That's right. <laughs>
right? We want to see you be you, like Rosa said. Yeah. Period. Quote that. <laughs> look, tw summer 2020 cat photo captions. I want to yes. see you. Be you. <laughs> All right, good night, guys. Thank you. I appreciate y'all for having me tonight. Thank no problem. So Do you want to ride with me? Change your own destiny. Do